G'day guys, we've got a couple of problems here which are going to require algebra and a couple of our index laws to help us simplify them. So what I see when I look at these two expressions that's going to give us trouble in the future is this addition sign and these two subtraction signs. Now, why these are going to give us trouble is because none of our index laws have any addition or subtraction signs. Well, they all involve multiplication or division of like terms. So what we're going to have to do is when you see an addition sign like this or subtraction signs like this, what we need to think is factorize. That's got to be the sort of the giveaway. We're going to need to factorize these algebraic expressions so we can find some common factors. Okay, so let's, let's start. We can see that in this expression, we've got 2 to the x plus 3. Now we're going to use the index law a to the n times a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m. In, we're going to go, use this index law basically in reverse to get this 2 to the x plus 3 at the top of this expression. So we're going to have 2 to the x obviously plus 2 to the x times 2 to the power of 3, all divided by 9. Now what we can see here is you've already got this common factor on either side of the addition sign of 2 to the power of x. So I'm going to factorize the numerator by 2 to the power of x. And to get to 2 to the power of x, I just have to multiply it by 1. And to get to 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 3, I have to multiply it by 2 to the power of 3. And that's all divided by 9. Okay, well you might be saying, well, hang on, how does that help us at all? Well, what you can see here, hidden, is 1 plus 2 to the power of 3. I can actually perform this addition now. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So I have 2 to the power of x times 9 divided by 9. Now, what we can do now is because there is no addition signs anymore, I can cancel these two 9s out. So all I'm left with is 2 to the power of x. And that's the solution of the first problem. So you can see how if you use a factorize, the use of factorization in this case was so that we could then perform the addition at, in the numerator. Now the factorization I'm fairly sure is going to have a different sort of effect on the simplification of this expression, but let's see what happens. So I'll change color. Um, actually no it won't. So let's use this index law again to separate this numerator here. So we're going to, this is going to be equal to 3 to the power of n times 3 to the power of 1 minus 15, which we can just, let's just write as 15. All divided by, I'm going to put it in the same order as I have at the top, 3 to the power of n times 5 minus 25. Now hopefully you can see in the denominator, the common factor here is going to be 5 on either side of the subtraction sign. So I'm going to write that in. 5 has to be multiplied by 3 to the power of n, and then it has to be multiplied by 5 to get to 25. Now at the top, my common factor, we can write 15 as being the product of 3 times 5. And what we can do here is we can go, well, the common factor here is going to be then 3. So I'm going to put that at the top. A 3 has to be multiplied by 3 to the power of n. Minus, and 3 has to be multiplied by 5 to get to 15. Now what you can see here is although we have a subtraction sign remaining, this 3 to the power of n minus 5 is being multiplied by 3 and it's being multiplied by 5 at the bottom. So we can treat whatever is inside this bracket as like one term 
and as a result, we can just cancel it out. So what we're left with is 3 over 5, or 0 0.6. So, it's quite clever how that works. You can only do these sort of cancellations when you've got a subtraction inside a bracket like this. So you can treat whatever's inside the bracket, so to speak, as a single term. Let's call it A. So as a result, you've got 3A over 5A. The A's would cancel, and we'd be left with just 3 over 5. Okay, so as you can see, guys, what I did in both of these situations, they're quite sort of complex um, expressions to look at when you first see them. But if you don't know exactly what to do, what I would first do is have it as a default setting in your brain. If you see a plus or a minus in these sort of index law, algebraic simplification sort of problems, factorize has to be your first point of call. If you don't know what you're doing, just factorize it. And what it'll do is it'll help you, I think, find like terms or it will help you go on to the next step. So the purpose of this video was to demonstrate that even if you have these quite complicated algebraic expressions, if we just use this default setting of factorization, it's not going to do us any harm. And if it doesn't do us any harm, that it's not, there's no point in not trying it as a potential way of solving these like difficult problems in an exam. So I hope the video helped, guys. I'm trying to look for new videos all the time. So if you have any problems that you'd like me to have a go at solving in basically any of this, any subject that you like, sling us a message or hit us up in the comment section below and I'll be happy to solve it. But until next time, I'll um, see you soon.